Watch Me Work and I'm SLP. We've been doing this show for 11 years and we are um, so glad and so appreciative of the Public Theater and HowlRound for joining us in this endeavor to bring it from the lobby of the Public Theater where we have been for the last 11 years to your homes and your bedrooms, Audrey Fishman. Uh, so you can <laughs> you can work in bed. I think there are a lot of writers who have worked in bed. Um, Winston Churchill, didn't he work in bed? And Proust, didn't he work in bed? And I think Maya Angelou would sprawl on the bed and at, at, at various hotel rooms where she rented and she would write while sprawled on the bed, I think. Um, so the bed is, yeah, the bed is for much more than loving. Uh, if you, so we're gonna work for 20 minutes and then we're going to talk with you about your work and your creative process. And if you should like to ask a question, Audrey's gonna tell you how. SLP. Um, so if you wanna ask a question and you are inside of the Zoom, all you need to do is click on the participant tab. Uh, uh, there's a raise your hand button in it. It's likely at the bottom of your screen if you're on a laptop or the top if you're on an iPad or a tablet. Um, and if you're watching on HowlRound.tv, you can ask us a question um, on Twitter by tweeting at, at WatchMeWorkSLP with the hashtag HowlRound, H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D, or you can actually tweet also at the public theater, which is at public theater NY or write to the public theater's Instagram. Uh, and that's all. That's everything. All right. That's everything. And it's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. So here we go. We're going to do 20 minutes. Here we go.
All right. All right, all right. Hmm. Are there any questions? Yes. Oh, I've got a question from Mark. Hey, Mark. Mark, go for it. Hi, hello. Hi. So nice to meet you. I uh, love your work. I'm a big fan. And uh, I'm very excited for these uh, writing events, which I've only just started in a couple of weeks. And I already feel very inspired. And it feels really amazing to participate. And I, I look forward to participating in many more. Uh, my question is uh, a little bit centered between creative and business today. I, um, I took a very long break from writing and ended up more in like the theater administration type work. And the furlough has given me an opportunity to explore some creative ideas I've been having. And I am sort of working on like a, a TV comedy pilot or a TV comedy show. And I, uh, excuse the dog, sorry. Um, and <laughs> and um, there's a, one. what's come up just now that's on my mind is um, there's a uh, class that I'm, that I, about comedy pitches and I submitted a pitch for the show and all I really have is a pitch and some character break, break some color, character development stuff and just like uh, just the beginning of, I, I know broad plot and just the beginning of like what the scenes look like. And it was only afterwards that I started to feel a little, um, the dog does definitely have a question, very inquisitive. Um, it was only afterwards that I started to feel like nervous about, you know, putting it out there. There was some fine print that the person is a, you know, an executive and they, they or other people might be developing similar or identical projects. And, you know, I was feeling like, um, when's like, how much do you need and when's a good, what's a good time to put some work out, ideas out, even if you don't have like the thing written. So I have like, is it okay to talk about a show to tell people your pitch when I don't have a pilot script to, you know, protect the work or something like that. And that's, you know, around about that's been on my mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question, Mark. Thank you for asking it. Um, it is a business question, but it's, it's also like a creative question because, you know, how do we keep working and how do we protect ourselves and our, our, our creative work, you know, while, trying to open up to people and share our work. Um, I would say since you, you, you've, this experience is already in your rear view mirror, um, uh, do you have any representation? I know you, you were writing, then you took a high, then you, you started doing uh, some production stuff. So do you have any, any, do you have an agent or anything like that? No, I, I don't have anything like that. I did go ahead and and register the pitch with WGA. Good. Great. Uh, just Great. went ahead and did that. It was easy. Just some, it was only like you know I just PDF what I wrote and registered it. So great. great. Um, That's really great. I would say. Um, I mean, when did you pitch this to the the these people? It was. Um, I submitted it like la yesterday. Oh okay. Oh <laughs> no, I mean the class to, the, to the class. Oh the to the class. Yeah, it is the class, and it goes to a comedic showrunner who works with on a on a Hulu comedy, mm -hmm. and they may or may not read it out loud and do a live feedback <laughs> for the writers. Right. Um, so, but right. but regardless, I think they're all being sent to this executive. Right. 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 Um... Yeah, so in the so it's already out there. You know what I mean. Yeah. You registered it with the WGA. Super, super smart. I would say going forward, um, the more the more uh, meat you have on the bones of the project, you know, you want you want I mean to use or to use a baby analogy, you want the baby to be a little further along before you pitch it, um, because you know exactly what kind of market it is. You know, and if if you go, I got a great uh, I got a great pitch about. Two guys, they're friends, they're living in an apartment. You know, someone could say, "Yeah, I have the I have the same idea." To you know, so we right. want to make sure there's more to it than um, next next time around. You know, yeah. and 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 going forward with this project, I think it's great that you've registered it, and I think that you should continue to write on it as much as you can to get the specifics out there. And the setup of that class. Um, my feeling is, eh. <laughs> my feeling is, it's tricky, man. I mean, you're you're paying for this class. 
Uh, right. It was a pay where you can format. So okay, um, okay, yeah. okay. I mean, For it's great to and film challenge. Okay, it's it's great to you know have feedback and stuff from people in the business. That's one of the reasons specifically why I do not ask writers in this format to share specifically about their work. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Because I yeah. don't want anybody to feel like they're giving away their prize thing in yeah. its in its rough draft form. You know what I mean? B because we're yeah. talking about process. It's very helpful what this producer can offer you feedback and stuff that can be very helpful. Um, so for that, it's 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 well worth it. Um, but also, you might in, going forward get also super helpful feedback from a community of friends and and known colleagues. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean yeah so yeah 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 and um do you think it's worth asking sorry about that do you think it's worth asking them if to not read it in this class sure to... sure that if that's what you feel I, I I would feel more comfortable if you know in your position if I don't read it you know it's um it's uh you know um you know I've been worked whatever you say just I'd feel comfortable not to read and not to share yeah yeah. Thank you. I, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate yeah. it. And there's, there, and there's, yeah. And then Mark, there's nothing wrong with that. You're just, you're just uh, being very selective about who hears your work in its early form. And I think that's a good thing. Um, and also just that kind of feedback, again, you, you can get from, from a closer circle of, of folks. Um, Cause you never know, you know, these executives, I mean, I work, in Hollywood a lot. These people get ideas all day long. And who knows, you're a, a nugget of, not your idea, but a nugget of idea X from writer Z can combine with a nugget of, from writer R and then put it together and they could think, oh, that's an original idea. And maybe it's not, they don't necessarily mean to co-op people's stuff, but it's good that you're gonna take a little step back. Thanks, Mark. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, we actually don't have a question at the moment. So, time to just pose. Uh, how's your day going so far, Audrey? Uh, you know, my day is good. It's, mm -hmm. I, I worked from my bed, as you all saw, mm -hmm. uh, which was nice. How's your day going? It's good. I had a lot of Zoom meetings, of course. Of course, we live on Zoom. We actually have a question. Oh, there you go. See, we vamped. We vamped. We did it. <laughs> Lou. Hi. Hi. Um, thanks so much. Last time I asked a question, it was after a vamping run, too. I think that must be when I feel like ready to get in there. Um, I asked a question a few weeks back. Um, it's a little bit of a related, related to that and a little bit of, of what, I'm sorry, the person who told me, Mark, it's a little business. It's a little businessy, but I'm going to go for it. <laughs> I actually have just finished the process of writing a book proposal, which was the way I was sort of guided by various people that I'm working with to try to sell an idea for this book, which is a memoir mm -hmm. that I've been writing about my life and advertising, which we had spoken about. And um, it's so interesting because my life in advertising has made me so much more interesting on the selling of the art. <laughs> than the art, and this is something we talked about last night. Ironically, my confidence in the proposal and the confidence in the person that was representing me in the proposal has been sort of, um, holes been sort of punctured in it. I think it went out right at the beginning-ish of the virus, and I think the publishing industry is so disrupted, and probably there's some problems with the proposal itself. I don't wanna only blame it on the world. Um, but it's not getting the response that I think we had all hoped for. So it's not over yet, but it looks like it might be. And there was a lot of enthusiasm for it previously. And I worked on it, I should say for six months. So there was about 120 pages of sample material, but then lots and lots of pages explaining the concept and the theories and why I was doing what I was doing. It really was a, a sales pitch to pay me money to spend a year to, to do the art of writing the book. So I think my question is, how do I sort of recover from that. I have not been feeling great. This is this place has been great because I think I already know the answer, which is probably just to keep going and maybe it's going to be a blessing in disguise because I put the selling in front of the making. But I was just wondering your take on it because it's been a little disheartening and has sort of put me in a 
funny place as I think about what I want to do next. It's a very d difficult place. I mean, you put in a lot of work. Um, it's not getting the reception that you had hoped. Um, can you still write it, though? I can. I could. And in fact, the person who's working with me representing it thinks that could be a solid next plan, that it could maybe go back to some of these places that it went in its fuller form when, it's, when and if it gets finished, yes. Yeah, because they can't take that away from you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's, we have to, we have to remember, I mean, they can't, we can remember, we have to think about when it comes to, to times like this, we got to go, okay, what can they take from me? And what can they not take from me? They can take from me the opportunity of, of getting published at their firm this year or what, you know what I mean? They can take from me something, maybe some other things. They can take from me a, a wonderful feeling like, hurrah, I wrote it and it sold immediately. Okay, great. But they can't take away, they can't take the writing of it from me. And that's when you enter the zone. See what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Ooh, it might hurt a little bit. Guess what? Join the club. Here we are. Rolling with the punches, baby. Right? Right? They knock us down like a weeble. <laughs> they knock us down, we get back up. Or like the, like my, uh, I used to take traditional Japanese karate, you know, that my kaicho would say, you knock down seven times, you get up eight times. You know what I mean? Like, what? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> bring it on, like we were doing yesterday. Christ the Redeemer, bring it on. How? Oh, bring it on. Come on, what? What are you going to do, right? So, Lou, yeah. write it and, and do it in, in manageable pieces, you know? Um, it sounds like you've got so much of the architecture already outlined or worked out already. You might want to really divide up the piece of the chapters. Maybe I don't know how it's organized, but you know, the pieces into manageable pieces so that you can keep your momentum, keep your spirit and, and collect stories about other writers who might've been rejected by every publishing house like <laughs> JK Rowling. I mean, you ever heard of her? She wrote this book about this wizard kid. Nobody wanted to do it. Ha ha ha. Right. Think right. about those people, people who were told that they shouldn't be writers because they didn't have what it takes. Me, mm. that was a note that I was given early in my career. <laughs> yeah, right. I, great. You know what I'm saying? So mm. that's okay. It doesn't, it doesn't mean anything, but that the timing's not right yet, but the timing's right for you to write. Okay. So keep coming here and we'll just keep encouraging you okay. to cross the finish line. And then it'll be time to send it out again. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Thank you. Thanks very You're much. You're welcome. You're Thanks, welcome. Lou. Um, all right. Up next, we've got Cody. Oh, Catherine. Sorry. Your first, last name is Cody. I messed up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's okay. I go by Cody. <laughs> oh, it's a cool um, name. So much. This is so wonderful. It's my first time attending. Um, oh, so great. Thank you. Um, I'm a big fan. So my question is probably, it may be a little broad, um, but I have primarily worked in fiction and short stories and I'm writing my first play right now, which is my first love. My um, background is in acting. And I wondered if you could just speak a little bit um, to A, shifting genres and kind of what your experience has been with that or, or sort of any advice with that. And then the second part of that um, is, you know, obviously with uh, playwriting, internal monologue, of course, isn't there in the same way. And that's something I've sort of been struggling with how I um, come to that same language that normally I'm sort of used to exploring um, someone's internal thoughts. Yeah, the, the, maybe the second one first. Good question. So we're shifting genres and what you don't have is you say the internal monologue, but you do have the external monologue, the soliloquy or the speech or the rant. <laughs> you know what I mean? Long, the diatribe, all, you know, so many plays have these long speeches to the audience, or if you fuel it with a desire of a character, it can be something that they're actually saying to another character. Okay. So you can get that information, that, that passionate stuff out uh, just as effectively in a play. Right. Um, also, I, I would say in, in genre, take what you, what you know already from writing short stories or from writing novels is a transferable skill. So you know how to build character, right? You're going to need to know that. You know how to craft dialogue, right? You're going to need to know that. 
You know how to describe things. You're going to need to know that, but it's different now. Because in a novel, I've written one novel only, so that's, I just know about one novel. But in a novel, I felt like I had to, you couldn't just say, she was a beautiful, you know, in a, in a play, you can write in a stage direction, she's gorgeous and tall, you know. In a novel, it's like, tell me more. How gorgeous is she? You know, like that. Or, you know, you need to, you need to elaborate, which is maybe why novels have more words than plays do. I don't know. But... So it's, it's, it's more, you need to give more detail. In a play, you need to just set the table for the detail to be arrived on and it's decided upon collaboratively because you're going to work with a team, you know, designers and yeah. actors and director and what producers and all that kind of stuff. So you just, it's, it's basically setting the table and um, preparing for the, it's like making space for your team more like stage directions you know and in a novel you've got to do all the heavy lifting yourself so that the play can happen where does a play happen in a novel in the imagination of the reader right first it happens in the imagination of the writer and then it happens in the stage the most underutilized venue in the universe <laughs> the stage up here right so you want to you want to in a novel you have to allow it to happen in my head and in a play, it's happening right before me. I don't need to imagine so much in that moment because you're showing me everything. So just know that the skills you learned in novel writing are going to be very useful. Short story writing are very useful. Also, the other thing, timing is very important in the theater. When you start a scene and when you exit a scene, that's very, very important. So in a short story or a, a novel, you have chapters and where they begin and where they end is very important. In a, in a play or a teleplay or a film, what's the first thing you see in a scene and what's the last thing you see? Um, so, you keep, so keep those things in mind too. And uh, read lots of plays also. Yeah, yeah. Or if you can see them online, you know, that's helpful too these days. But read lots and lots of plays, digest a lot of plays. It'll help. And since it's your first love, you got it, you know. Thanks, Catherine. Thanks, SLP. Um, we're going to go to Giselle. Yay. Hi. Hi, Audrey. Hope you're doing well. Hi, Audrey. Hi, everybody. Oh, okay. Um, I am currently um, starting a healing business. I'm a healer. Oh. And um, I'm also a writer and a director and for a long time, I have kind of like hid my spirituality or just like my, my spiritual perspective for fear of being judged or for fear of, um, I don't know, being treated, um, being felt smaller by people who feel like healing is not intellectual or realistic or real. Um, so I finally got to a point where I feel ready to put my healing modality out into the world, but I'm now experiencing this fear of um, it threatening my artistic career or I don't know, like closing doors to pub publishers or producers who know that I'm also a healer and don't agree with that. Um, my healing modality is the Akashic Records. I don't know if people have heard of that. It's sort of similar to shamanism um, where you're channeling spirit and um, telling folks what spirit is telling you, which feels a lot like writing to me. Um, so I think my question is just how do I move forward um, having these different parts of myself suddenly be um, out in the open for the world to see and for in a world where people might not um, see them as being, um, I don't know, compatible. Right. Well, thanks for letting us in on who you really are. I think it's beautiful. I think it's gorgeous. I mean, you've been here for like how many weeks? You've been kind of I've been here so long. It's been months. I know, right? And you haven't I like told place. us, right? You haven't told us who you really are. Thanks, Giselle. I think it's beautiful. I mean, this is the deal. You guys already know the answer to this one. The people who don't want you around, fuck them, right? You don't want to be around them anyway, Giselle. You really don't. If they say, Giselle, you're a brilliant playwright or you're a brilliant writer, but you're also a healer. Oh, I don't think so. 
We're not going to produce you in our theater. Fuck you. Have them call me. And I'll say, fuck you, stupid idiot person. How dare you, right? <laughs> or whatever. We don't want to be part of your season anyway. I mean, honestly, right? Honestly, the people who don't want you around, you don't want to be around. Yeah. They don't deserve you. It's the people who want you around and who get you and jive with you. I mean, just think of, think of the math and just, just on a piece of paper, people who do not want you around because you're a healer, <laughs> right? I mean, okay. So I would, I would say, you know, inhale some of your courage and love that you so often give out to other people because you're a healer, you're, you're giving, giving goodness and love out to other people. Take some of that in for yourself, mm -hmm. right? And know that you can be both, right? You can be a great writer and a healer. You can be, you know, the, the, God, the spirit is big enough to embrace you as you choose to present yourself. Mm -hmm. It's the small minds that are fucking up the shit, let me tell you. <laughs> All right, people who are like, no, it can only be like this. You can only use that bathroom and you can only do this and you have to be in before curfew and you can only have that job and you know what I'm saying, okay? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, keep, make sure you have your writing practice together though. So don't, you know, if you're, if you're spending, you, now I have to be all this, you know, make sure you have your writing practice to make sure you keep time, that time, putting the time into that. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You said something else. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. That's, that's already just so good to hear. Um, but the, the other thing I'm thinking is like, do I even have to like make a pseudonym for myself to separate the identities? Um, my instinct is no, I don't, I, I feel like I contain multitudes and like, fuck that. And I just want to come out as myself, but then there's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Quote Walt Whitman. There you go. When in doubt, I contain multitudes. Yes, ma'am. Yes. 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 Challenge us with yourself. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. give, and give us the chance to grow by being in your presence. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks, Giselle. Yay. We've actually got a couple of questions from social media. Um, this person named Emma writes, hey, SLP, I'm writing a play with a single character alone on stage. I don't want to use direct address, so she talks on the phone a lot. Is that boring? Is there a better vehicle for monologues? Oh, boy. Well, it's, it's only boring if what she's saying is boring. I mean, here I am just talking. Well, I know you guys are really there, but no. It depends what she's talking about, I would say. If you don't want to use direct address, you're sure of that. And you only want to have her talking on the phone. I think it's all in what she's talking about. You know, and how you imagine her physicality. Um, I would say try it. I would say, have you written the whole thing yet? I would say, are you looking for an excuse to stop? I would say I'm not going to give you an excuse to stop. I would say keep writing. Have it be on the phone. Make it a really long play. Yes, a long phone. Right? Please. Could she be on more than one phone? Like, I don't know. Just a question. I love this. Great answer. <laughs> I accept this answer. All right. <laughs> There's another social media question, actually. Sorry, it's like goes into the void of my face. Okay, um, how much important? Oh, this is this person named Gavion, okay. uh, and Gavion says, "How much importance does formatting in writing plays matter?" I have never really been schooled in writing plays, and I have developed my own style that isn't a standard format. Question mark. Well, Gavion, as long as it's readable, you know what I mean. If you're going to send it to a reader or send it to your friends, and they go, "Gee." You know, you turn the pages all upside down and we can't make head or tail of it. You know, I would say that's not a great format, but if it's a format that is, that where people are able to read it off the page, then I'd say it's a fine format. I like making my own format uh, 
just because I want it to look a certain way on the page. Um, uh, but uh, I think it's fine that you, you use your own kind of format. I would say so. But if it gets in the way of people reading it, then I say it's a problem because then it gets in the way of your play. Um, maybe. maybe. Well said. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Um, and now we actually don't have any questions. So I'm wondering, how was the rest of your day? You had a lot of Zoom calls. I had a lot of a lot of Zoom calls, and you know, um, these days, I'm sure for a lot of you guys, there are sort of multiple tornadoes swirling, and maybe they're intersecting. You know, I'm, I'm involved in sort of multiple or tornadoes. <laughs> I'm being polite. Shit storms, multiple shit storms swirling around, and um, and the we're we're being uh, invited to look at our lives and some of us have that opportunity and sometimes we work in circles that are taking that opportunity and it's not always easy um, and some of the places where we work aren't taking the opportunity at all and that's not easy either so it's very we we're living in some interesting times here um definitely but i i keep writing every day you know it's like you know, yeah. even if it's a little bit, you know what I mean? Even if it's yeah. a, a tiny smidgen, keep it, I just keep it moving. Well, we have two questions. See? <laughs> we did it. Because it's like, <laughs> don't let her just talk. <laughs> Jesus Christ, what is she talking about? <laughs> gorgeous. All right, we've got about 11 minutes left and we're going to go to Julia. Um, hi. Hey. Um, I, this isn't so much a question as a big uh, thank you. Um, I started coming to this about a month ago, mm -hmm. and I was having a lot of trouble with this piece, like a one character play thing mm -hmm. that I've been writing mm -hmm. on and off for like a year and a half. And in the last four weeks, it's been so intense. Um, every question that everybody asked it had to do with, you know, writing as a, um, uh, it just, it was like uh, he, icebergs started breaking and the, like, uh, like just showing up and what do you do when it hurts? And like that thing you said, oh, I'm going to cry. <laughs> that thing you said about like, I want to embrace it and I want to eat it and pay attention to your muse. And well, it was so amazing. But I still was having trouble writing, <laughs> but I was, I constantly kept getting inspired because I kept coming back to this. And I had this thing, that, just a shift that happened because I kept sitting down and I kept like, even I don't have a timer. I know you're not supposed to do it, but I've been doing it. Um, but I kept sitting down and like this, this like subterranean shift happened like yesterday and and now i kind of can't wait to sit down and write and and i think that like the things that you kept saying and that i kept hearing was you, you just show up and listen mm -hmm. and i kept thinking I don't hear any voices in my head. I don't hear any voices, but I guess I had to listen to my heart instead of my head. And anyway, oh my God, it's just so great and thank you. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> thank you. It makes me so happy. That's yeah. why I'm here. That's why I'm, I show up. That's why I'm glad to see you folks, you know? Because and the energy, the muses know we're here. The muses know Julia that you sit down every day and wait. They see you, like I see you, like we all see each other. There's power in that, even when we're sometimes in despair. Yeah. So truly. And now that yeah. you're in triumph, go, sister. You uh -huh. go. You write your thing. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Thanks, Julia. Um, all right, we're going to go to Gerald. Hi. 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 
Hi, thank you so much for this. Um, I'm just so profoundly grateful. I have um, my question is first of all, I'm so I'm taking a play I wrote and turning it into a novella. And my character um, goes back and forth from, uh, from being a, an adult to a child. And I worry that it's not clear. I have references and I try to make her sound like a child, but I wonder if there's a way to do that effectively. I'm worried that it's gonna be confusing. The other, should I wait for my part two, ask my part two another time? It's okay? Okay, my part two is that with all that's going on, I find, and I know you've addressed this, that it's harder than ever to feel that my writing matters. And I'm really struggling, I'm embarrassed to bring this up, that I'm struggling because I think there's so much going on right now in the world that I don't deserve to tell my story. I know that's intense. Um, and it's forced me to go deeper, but it's really a struggle to think why, because I think I don't, my story doesn't matter. We'll do, those are great questions and or comments and statements, Gerald, and we'll talk about both of them. The first one, you're going from a novella to a play or from a play to a novella? From a novella to a play? A play to a novella. A play to a novella, right. Okay, so it's the same thing. that In, in a play, it, you might think it's easier because you have an actress who's obviously a woman and obviously a child, you know, or, you know and it's easy to distinguish. Um, but if you can think of specifically what they are saying and what they are going for, these characters, right? Okay. And I think desire, what you, if you were, I don't know, let's just say a child, 12, I, how old is the child? She's, she's different. She's five years old. Okay. She's seven. Okay. Okay. So a five, seven, 12, a child, yeah. uh, I think I would guess wants different things. Her desire is different. Her desires are different than the desires of say a 20, 30, 40, 70 year old woman. And desire, again, I tell, you know, have this funny state saying based on geometry, two points make a line, okay, which is a geometric rule. Um, two points, where you are and where you want to be, make a line of dialogue. I know, it just became about playwriting. So what she, where she, who she, where she is now and where she wants to go can help you create the lines of dialogue that you need, okay? And where the five-year-old is and where the five-year-old wants to go is gonna create a different kind of dialogue than say for the woman version of this character. Does that make sense? So what, yeah. she's, do, what she's doing is gonna be different. Um, I might yeah. look at my son running around. Granted, he's, a, he's a, 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 a boy, but you know, what he's doing is very different from what I'm doing. So their day-to-day -day activities are different. Okay, yeah. so you distinguish your characters in terms of act, what they're doing, what they want, their, their circumstances. So that's, that's one thing. Okay, that's great. Now, do, if, you're at, if you're wondering if you have the right to write, mm -hmm. right? The answer is yes, of okay. course you do. Okay, um, because uh, if, if, you know, so many of us at any times of our lives are told that our writing doesn't matter and our lives don't matter, you know, which is, you know, this Black Lives Matter uh, uprising is having us all again look at our lives in a very um, deep and significant and necessary way. And of course you have the right to write. You know what I mean? Of, of course you have, you have, you have something to say. Okay. I, I don't know if it's going to be a bestseller list, you know, on the bestseller list of the New York times or on Broadway running like cats or Hamilton <laughs> cats, Hamilton cats, you know, you know what I mean? I can't promise you that Gerald, but 
you do have the you do have the right to tell your truth. Mm. You know, I would maybe say you have the obligation. Uh. What else are you doing in your life? See what I'm saying? Well, you're yeah. going to wait till you, till you feel like you have the right. I mean, you know, sometimes you know we can help you open the door here, but you got to walk through it. Yes. You know, and the door is open. And why is the door open? Because you are alive and, and advantaged enough to have the means to sit in front of a computer. You have the me, you know, I mean, right now we all, I mean, and you know, we can talk about privilege. Some of us are more privileged than others. Hello. Right now we all have means to this thing and at least 20 minutes a day if you show up in this class. So you got the obligation to do something with that. I don't know what your story is. I don't know what you need to talk about and tell, but it is your obligation to do that. Right? Beautiful. Okay. Thank so, you. You know, don't cop out, Cheryl. Don't cop out. We don't need you. Out. We need you to help us through. Okay. We need everybody. Thank you. Here. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Daryl. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Um, all right, we've got about 30 seconds left and we don't have any questions. So I would like to say it's pretty much six o'clock. Thanks, everybody. Monday to Thursday, 5 p.m. Here we are. And if you sign up by 3 p.m. Eastern every single day, I will send you a link between 3 and 4.30 p.m. Eastern. And then you can come zoom on in or watch us on howround.tv. And that's the plan. We'll see you tomorrow.